It's Tozer. <laughs> I was going, where did the camera go? Uh, I walked out here and... It's amazing how warm, how hot, how much the weather is so influencing. First of all, my garden to grow. But then also, it seems to wear you down sometimes that you need to take your pace a little slower you know maybe not go as fast or as hard at something as you might want to so recognize that circumstances aren't meant to hinder us completely but to deliver us to a place of understanding that god leads us thoroughly to the pace we need to go that it's called a walk with God, not a run ahead of Him or lag behind Him, but to walk with God daily so that we would hear His voice and do those things that He wants us to do. I know last night I couldn't sleep at all, and it seems as though that it has had a major effect on me, and I'm so tired and sore and achy and that, that, that. But at the same time, there was a favorite star I have that was in the East, and I probably a planet <laughs> but about this time of year it always comes up and it always reminds me of the Lord so it's not as though I put my stock and trade into what I see and it's not a sign and wonder but it's just a memorial stone an Ebenezer an Ebenezer a stone of remembrance a little touchstone that I can kind of look at and go ah oh, my thoughts turn to God and I picture him watching and waiting for the moment that he could come and rescue us from this world and its ways and it was nice i enjoyed it i enjoyed being able to see it you know though my eyes have begun to fail and i wear glasses more often than not and i can't see as well as i think i can still the beauty of it was a joy to behold again and then tozer There is a delight in true service for God. And to know the love of Jesus which passes knowledge that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. The Bible instructs the Christian believer that he should be dedicated to the glory of the one whom he has not yet seen because we love him. That is the sum of Christianity, to know him and to love him. That <laughs> is the sum of Christianity, to know him and to love him, to know Jesus, and to love Jesus, to know the Father, and to love the Father. This is eternal life that they may know me, Jesus taught. So the knowledge of God is eternal life, and the knowledge of setting forth the life of God in man is the business of the church. Meaning that the church is here to help you develop a personal relationship with God that you may know him better, not that you may be equipped to go out and do the works of God, but rather to know God. There's a difference in differentiation there. One can operate without the other, but one absolutely covers the other. So to know God covers works. To not know God, you could do the works of God without Him completely. It is a wonderful facet of love that we always take pleasure and delight in doing those things that are pleasing to the one we love, even as Jesus did. I find that the believing Christian who really loves his Lord is never irked or irritated at the service that he is giving to Jesus. The Lord will give him delight in true service for God, and I say it this way because generally the irksome and boring features of Christian service are some of the things that people and organizations have added on. In other words, the things that are so work, and you can always see this behind the scenes when you work behind the scenes, the people that really shouldn't be doing what they're doing don't enjoy it. They get paid, so they do it. And if you have a paid ministry, then you get what you pay for. If you have someone who loves to do it, then it doesn't matter whether they're paid or not. They just go and do it because they enjoy it. They love it. It's a part of their being. It is something they delight to give to God. And I see so many in the church today making that big mistake that they think that the church has become a vocation rather than their avocation should be that which is a declaration of Jesus himself and that they should go out and get a job and not be paid by a ministry. Let me say that again. They should go out and get a job and not be paid by a ministry. Because you see, 
The ministry was never meant to be a vocation for you to prosper from. You're not supposed to get prosperous from it. You're not supposed to be paid. No offense, you're not a priest. I don't see anyone living in a community the way that the priesthood did in those days. But rather, if there is something given to you for the fact that you served, that would be an offering from, not the ministry, but from the place that God has given people in charge of to give to you something in return for service or for doing something good. And the people would do that. So I don't believe in, and I never have, in paid ministry. I believe that if you get something from God, then people will give it to you and God will bring it to you in some way without it being a direct check or money paid for doing something to whom you love and you now have a price tag on your love. It doesn't work that way. And God never intended it to be so. And sadly, the church hears a stray on that. And it will answer for it, but where God abides, God provides, and God can take care of it himself. We can work and do the ministry, too. You can have a job and do the ministry. Don't know why it's complicated. It's pretty simple. It is always pleasant and delightful to set forth the praises of someone who really love. Those who truly love Jesus find it is one of the greatest pleasures in life to be able to simply to describe how he discovered his great love for us and how we are trying to return that love and devotion as we serve him in faith each and every day of our life. Don't get me wrong, all the ministries I grew up in, all of them have some type of form of declaration of making some prosperity out of what they get from serving the Lord. So in those choices that they make, then praise the Lord. They do as they are accountable to God for. But for me, I could never find factual, scriptural, evidentiary for me to prove that the ministry was to be charging or taking or receiving, but rather it would take in and give out as fast as it got. So when I see a house of worship that there should be meat in his house, I don't see that as money. I see that the poor people should be able to come to the house of God and find meat in his house. That the poor people should be able to come to the house of God and find bread in his house. And I mean literal bread and meat. So if people would be starving in the community, they would know where to go. And it wouldn't be public support. But rather, it would be God providing by way of his body of believers sharing the bounty that they have. Because God has blessed them for being faithful to him. And they would give of their bounty to those who are poor and needy and have no food. That's why you still see food ministry and clothing ministries and little things sort of part of the church. Sometimes a big part, but sort of. And people don't realize that tithing was never intended to be transferred or transformed into some kind of meat means the word. No, it doesn't. Meat does not mean the word when it comes to tithing, ever. Don't ever get deceived by that. Don't ever be lied to. Look it up in scriptures. That there may be meat in my house is because they brought sheep. And they brought all these things. And don't let anyone tell you it's because they converted it into money. And then used the money for what? The reality is to build a building. That's what they convert the money into. But there should always have been granaries, storehouses, and meat in the house of God to feed those who came and were in need. For if they could not come to the house of God to receive help in time of need, then why are we calling them our brother? And who is our brother's keeper if it's not us? Who indeed if it's not you?